So this is our first look at the Schuyler County 55 acre farm. It's got close proximity to the Lemoyne River and these nasty thick bottoms down there that are just a constant source of big deer during the rut. The development actually started yesterday and we pushed this road in behind me, fixed a crossing in the bottom, which I haven't even seen yet. And this was all to get us access up to these two premier locations on the east side of this farm. They were tillable fields here not too long ago, but they've since been let go. They are premium locations for food plots. We just nicknamed this farm the windmill farm. There's an old windmill platform and it's actually back here in the timber. Usually you see them out in the fields and stuff. That is freaking cool. This ditch was too big, too steep to get a tractor through or get a skid steer through. And so we had a little mini excavator come in here yesterday and drug a big pipe in, remove this little kind of wooden bridge they had for ATVs in here, pulled it all out and put a giant pipe in here, graded the crossing over. So now it's gonna let us get across here and go up that finger to one food plot location. And then we're gonna go through there and go up that finger to another food plot location. The, the creek bottom kind of flows and goes up that hog's back. I think we're gonna cut a road in there as well. And that will actually come right into the back of what could be a cabin location or your parking area or something. So you're gonna have multiple ways of getting from the, where you're gonna come into the farm. Heading up this ridge up to this incredibly awesome food plot area. It's just got the vibe. You get up here, man, it looks like uh, like Iowa and Kansas kind of combine cedars and high grass. A small piece like this, you gotta be real careful with access. So part of the strategy on this is gonna be, how do we get the access in to these places that we're gonna develop so that you can come and go without blowing all your deer into your neighbors. We're gonna take some of these white oaks out of here and let the tops fall down into the bottom and thicken this whole bowl up. One, to create more security cover two, so that we can come in and out of this road. And if something's in that part of the farm, we've, we've got these treetops and cover and stuff that's gonna allow us visually to get in and out of here. We're gonna take and remove some of those cedar trees. We're gonna put like a acre, or acre and a half food plot up in here. Because we're gonna put it in proximity to the main food source, which is gonna be your corn and bean field on the neighbors. When those big deer, get up and they start to move towards food, oftentimes they don't come out in those crop fields till after dark. But if you can stagger your food back in 150 yards and you surround it with this kind of thick cover, deer is gonna feel comfortable moving into something like that in daylight hours. I'm gonna push those cedar trees up there in a line. I think we're gonna put the box line right between those two trees and you'll be able to get out of the back of the box and walk this way behind this pile of cedar trees and be down over the edge with deer still out in the field. So that, that point of timber that stops right there, it's got a pretty steep drainage in it. We're gonna look at it in the bottom too because it does something else pretty cool too. But what it does here is those deer, when they come from the neighbors, tillable, and they start to travel through this thicket, they know that the head of that drainage is there. And this giant trail right here just cuts right off the tip of it. You can tell that these bucks, when they get in this type cover, which is which makes up a lot of the south part of this farm, they just feel comfortable. You know, it's got this low security cover. You get in here, they mingle around, they get all rambunctious, and they start tearing up the trees and scraping and chasing does. And you know, when you we get out there and build that food plot and put a tree coy in the middle of it and all these roads and, and stuff all lead out there, I mean it's gonna be craziness. So we're on the south side of the food plot area. And the timber in here gets really open again. But as you can see, we've got some blue marks on these trees. I'm gonna cut some of the bigger white oak out of here and let those tops kind of thicken the cover up, just kind of change the whole look and how the deer use it. And then on the tops of these ridges, we'll have roads running this way that funnel out and feed into the food plot. There's also this big drainage ditch that comes up through the middle and it stops right here behind me. This is a big like cut through rut funnel. These big deer, they can just bounce through this whole property and cruise these little road systems because we've put them in the right place and just set check that whole plot without actually having to step out there. We were just down in the bottom there showing you that little cut through that we were gonna put in. Come up here on this next top, and we're at the back edge of this cedar thicket. 
and you have this long ridge you can see sweeping up through here and it comes right up into this corner. The next ridge over, you can see how long that is and it comes out of the creek bottom and it sweeps up and then that little cut through road will connect these two. So you're gonna have a wicked inside corner. You know, the timber type changes. It's like everything comes together right here. That white oak right there, put, put that V at your back. 20 foot ladder stand will be right about the right height to catch that back cover and get it right. That way you're hunting this road top. You can shoot the intersection. You're shooting the inside corner of this cedar thicket where it comes around. But this is just gonna be a killer rut spot. We're gonna mark this tree. There she is. The whitetail group was here. All these little hogs back ridges, they're all south facing on one side. I'm gonna drop some trees, thicken up these south facing slopes and then put a little road across the top of each one that feeds food plot area. So the theme on this whole side of the farm is everything that we're doing feeds that that premier food plot location that we're gonna build out there. The timber changes here and it gets small, which lets more light in through the canopy. This whole top is considerably thicker than everything else that touches it. And everywhere around here, it's all blowed up with way more concentration of deer sign than, than what we've seen in the open timber. These scrapes are here on the outside of this little top because this is where the doe scent is. So the bucks come in here, they check this little bedding thicket, they hit a scrape and they're on to the next spot. See this steep ravine behind me? It leads all the way back out to where like the parking area or cabin area or the place that you're gonna come and go from this place leads right to that. So you can get out of your truck and dump into this little drainage ditch, come all the way behind me and up onto this flat. And we're gonna clear a food plot in the end of this flat here. So we've got blue paint here already on the whole perimeter. We're gonna put about a half acre way up here on the east side of this thicket. We'll leave as much of this thicket as we can intact for cover. We got an S painted on this small pin oak for a ladder stand, probably put a low 12 foot ladder in there so we can stay down in the cover. And then we just showed you that ditch that comes right from the parking area down through the bottom. And all you gotta do is come right over the edge right into this tree stand. They don't get much more classic than this. Big drainage comes up, stops. Got this little flat spot. 20 yards that way, you got a six strand cattle fence. There's huge rubs and you can see all the trails kind of coming here to come across. You got a triple little patch of white oak right there. You put a stand right in that middle white oak. South wind blows out across the pasture hunt this pinch point. I mean, this is this is a slam dunk. Years and years and years of bucks coming through this pinch point and smashing her head into that thing and rubbing her scent glands on this. I mean, you find stuff like this, these are almost as important as your big hub scrapes because again, repeating theme, it's all about scent. Concentration of scent makes high probability areas. The last element needed would be standing crop. And I believe that this field we're standing in here on the west side of the property is big enough to make that happen. We're gonna go ahead and clear some of the brush out of the middle of it. We're gonna clear some of the saplings so we can cheat it that way as much as possible. And we super easy access to have a box up here and, and literally only walk 100 yards from your truck to the back side of the box and be able to hunt all this standing food this way. And at the very end of this field, it rolls into south facing hillside and then it rolls down to the road, and then across the road is that solid, crep river bottom awesomeness for big deer. So we were over on the other side of the farm talking to you about those south-facing bedding thickets we were gonna create and the roads that went up each one of them to go to the plot on the east side of the farm. We we're looking across over there, and you can really see how that terrain is structured. They're almost identical hogsback ridges going up into that middle part of the farm. You know, and then this side, it got a little bit of a steeper wall. It comes up to the west side food over here. This place is so interesting for a 55 acre piece. It literally has everything that you could want. We're super excited to get this one started. We got snow coming tomorrow, so we wanted to make sure we got in here and showed you how everything looked here before we get this one underway.